I bought a filthy NES off Facebook Marketplace for $30 and this is how it went. What's up nerds, welcome to Endgame. I'm Hoops4 and in this video I will be testing, cleaning, and opening up this console that has been left worse for wear. As you can see, it is covered in dirt and has some cracks and broken corners on the case. There is a layer of grime and, on, and the top cover is completely yellowed as many consoles do with age. However, it did come with the original Legend of Zelda, so I am excited to try that out, assuming it works. The guy I bought it from has no idea if the console or game work or not, so without further ado, let's hook it up and try it out. Inter gaming. So we're all hooked up, I'm ready to test this guy out and see if it has life and can boot a game. I have a little trouble getting the cartridge to stay pushed down due to the spring, but eventually I get it to click. Helps if I turn the TV on and, wait for it, blue screen. So let's try this one more time. Let's boot it up again, see what happens. And we have life. So the console works and game boots. So that makes my investment look a whole lot better. Now for the next step, let's open this console up. So first thing I'm gonna do is unhook everything and I take the game out and flip the console over to reveal six screws on the backside. So I start by removing those. So as I'm taking these screws out, I feel like it's worth mentioning that I do have a little experience in what I'm doing here. Uh, I am actually a computer engineer, so I've always liked taking things apart. And now that I understand the inner workings of game consoles and whatnot, uh, it brings an extra little bit of joy to me to be able to take these apart and salvage them or clean them up. Um, and I'm really excited to see what's underneath this one. So after a little trouble with the screws, eventually I get them all, and I'm able to open up the console and I flip it over. So there is a good bit of dust underneath here, and uh, I will show some pictures here in a second. But overall, it's really not as bad as I thought it would be. There's a few dust bunnies, but nothing too crazy. Uh, but the dust on the inside of the console looks pretty nasty. Uh, there's a little bit of rusting, but the capacitors look good. So as you can see here, there's a good bit of grime on, on the vents, uh, and that's going to be tough to clean up. A little bit of rusting, some dust bunnies and some crumbs of some kind in here, but overall the console looks pretty good. So the next thing I'm going to do here is take a couple of these screws out so I can remove the shielding for the 72 pin connector. So I'm hoping at this point that after I removing the shielding, I'll be able to get to the cartridge holder and see what is causing the springs to not lock in place properly. All right, and we're ready to take off the shielding. So underneath we can see that it's actually really not too bad, uh, but I do want to take apart the cartridge holder because I was having some trouble with it, so I want to make sure I clean the springs and make sure it all latches better. So there are just a couple screws removed and then I'll be able to take it out. I work it a little bit and eventually it will pop right out. So now I have access to a lot more of the inner workings. I can see the top of the board, or I guess the bottom, the 72 pin connector and the cartridge holder. So hopefully I'll be able to diagnose what's going on with those springs. But overall, the PCB itself looks good. Uh, it doesn't look like there's too many issues with the board. It looks pretty clean, but it's well protected by the cartridge holder. So here there are some weird crumbs down at the bottom of the console, so I scraped them out with my screwdriver uh, as best I can without scraping the plastic. And some of it comes out as you can see on the table, but uh, there's even more in there that I'll have to dig in to be able to get. Um, there's some good dust bunnies and stuff, and I'll have some pictures of the rest of the carnage, but you can see there that there's just a bunch of crap in this thing. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it would be coming from a garage, but there's some dust bunnies and stuff that shouldn't belong. Uh, I even found a dead bug in here. So now I just have a couple more screws to remove and I will be able to lift up the whole board assembly and have access to the whole bottom of the case as well as all the inner workings that I may need to get to. 
Like I said before, the capacitors all look good and I'm not seeing any issues with the board itself. It looks like it's been pretty well protected and a little bit of dust won't end up hurting it too bad. After all, there are no major issues. The game reads, the audio was good. Uh, so I'm not really worried about diagnosing any kind of problems with that. Uh, and right now I'm just worried about being able to clean the bottom of the case. So I lift the board and make sure I can do that. All the player connectors where the controllers would go and the buttons, all that looks good. And I don't have to see any issues with the bottom of the board. So I take some compressed air and blow it out, make sure we get all the dust out of it. And I take some alcohol and cotton swabs and clean it out. And as you'll be able to see, it is gross. There is so much more coming up than I thought it would be. Uh, and I'll show some pictures so that you can really see how much stuff is coming up. Yeah, you can see on some of those cotton swabs. So I take it around the outside, I make sure I get all the dust bunnies and stuff, and as you can see, uh, there's a lot coming up. I just have to keep working it until I can get it all. Now this part does take me a minute because it is filthy, so if you guys don't mind, in the meantime, do me a favor, go down, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, what do you like about this, what do you not, I appreciate you all, I appreciate your feedback. Once I feel like the bottom is sufficiently clean with alcohol and cotton, then I move to uh, putting things back. So I start with the baseboard and I screw it back in. So overall for this layer, once I get the board back in, I'm not really too concerned about cleaning it other than putting a couple cotton swabs and alcohol to a couple areas that could use a little help. Uh, but it mostly looks good. I'm not trying to mess up anything with this layer or the board itself as the board is running fine. I don't want to accidentally cause some static damage. Now I turn my attention to the cartridge holder, and I don't see any immediate issues that would cause the spring to fail, so I go ahead and clean it with some alcohol and take some compressed air to it. And as you can see, it is pretty dirty. Now of course that is part that does get exposed to the outside world, so I make sure I clean the springs and uh, make sure everything is clicking as it should here in a minute. So I slide it back into place, make sure the 72 pin connector is in a good position, and then we're going to screw it back in. And I do think the screws were part of the issue anyway, I think in a repair, or uh, just over time they became loose and they were a little too loose and that was causing the cartridge holder to not click into place because it had too much slack. All right, gonna clean off the shielding. There's a little bit of rusting there that I'm not gonna be able to do much with at the moment, but we get it back on and then screw it back in to protect the connector. So overall, I really like how well this cleaning has gone so far. Um, I would say repair, but everything actually worked properly, which honestly I was not expecting given the state of the console when I got it. There were no cords or anything, it just came with the console and the game. Just a couple screws to get into place, tighten them up, make sure we're all good, test the connector out. Alright, so now we're going to move into the fun part. We're going to clean the top shell. Now I'm not going to do any retro whiting on this one in this video, but I will do that uh, as a personal project. So gonna clean out these vents, but that is going to be tricky. So I'm gonna move on and clean some of this other stuff. Once again, I'm using cotton and isopropyl alcohol, 70% uh, I believe. And we're just gonna get as much as we can. There's a layer of grime and dirt and it's all around the edges. It's on the inside, it's everywhere. So we're just gonna do the best we can, clean this guy up and get it back into a better working condition. It did still work, there was no damage to any actual uh, important components, which is good. But it wasn't really pretty, especially on the outside. As you'll be able to see in a minute, there's a layer and you'll be able to see lines of where I've cleaned it and where I haven't. And it's really satisfying to watch. So I'm going to shut up for a minute and let you enjoy this. So as you can see there, it was just nasty. So I went ahead and took some alcohol and a paper towel and cleaned it all up very lightly with the paper towel. And like I said, I'm not going to take care of as much of the yellowing. Uh, this project is more about getting the dirt off and restoring some of its former glory. So at this point, I'm just trying to get in every crevice because there's dirt in every crevice of this thing. I mean, it's been sitting in a garage for who knows how long, who knows where it was before that, and this thing has had dirt just compiling in it over time. And it seems like it's been a long time. 
So at this point, I'm just taking a small screwdriver and I'm trying to get in these vents and clean them out as best I can. Um, that's my goal at this point is just to do it the best I can because it won't be perfect by the time I'm done with it. Um, there is just so much dirt in every single one of these slits that it would be it's nearly impossible to eat it all. So now it's time to give the bottom of the case some love and realistically I probably should have done this when I had the board almost all the way out but since I didn't remove all those final connectors I decided that this would just be the better way of doing it. So I make sure I clean around the buttons around the connectors um, and basically I like to see if there's any other loose ends that I may have missed especially on the bottom part since this is my first time looking at it and it's sitting on the dusty table. But now it's time to button this thing up and plug it in and see if it still works. So I couldn't help but get nostalgic when I was doing this video and I started thinking back to some of my favorite games on the console and for me the game on the NES that always stood out was Super Mario Bros 3. So let me know when you think of the NES let me know down in the comments what is the game that you think of. Alright now it's time to connect everything up make sure it still works and I'll show you guys some images of the carnage and where we came from. We still have life be looking out for a Zelda video up soon. And check out the dust, the dirt, the grime, and how it looked before. And check out these lines on this guy. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoy this kind of video, please let me know so I can do more. Because uh, I want to give the people what they want. That's all for me. See you, nerds. Thank you for watching right here on Endgame. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more content.